from we are back welcome hello this is ccb fozzy joined by apothony once again here for our next match in the 12th alliance tournament this is the unthinkables versus feign disorder and lots and lots more drones on this field we've got triple eos uh, neros uh, double carries triple vexer triple malediction from the unthinkables uh, a good strong kind of combination of damping with uh, tank and uh, damage and why don't you tell us a little about, about the feign disorder team of feign disorder team just going all in with dp Yes, you've got an Eos. You've got the Neos for Logi. You've got three Vexor navies, three Vexors, a Crore, some lovely webs, and three Worms for even more drone DPS. Just both teams, mm -hmm. super, super high drone DPS setups, but with the Unthinkables team going for a little bit more support with the Maledictions and the Carry. So it's been That's interesting the... to see how they go with the matches starting there it goes. right now. Here the we go. Let's Unthinkables see what team draw. came in a lot closer to the beacon than the Feign Disorder guys. Feign Disorder came in all at max range of 50 while the Unthinkables spread out and we're already seeing a lot of Warrior 2s and Valkyrie 2s yeah. coming Gekos, across the field. Valkyries, play. fast, fast, fast drones against and then remember Mimitar drones do explosive damage. Glente, well known for the explosive hole. The Vexor of Space Chutney already taking a lot of damage as well as the carries. Ooh, looks like they're splitting fire, but that just means that Yanuros is going to have to really think carefully about how he splits his reps. Yeah, and already lots of damage sort of on that carries. Uh, the uh, carries of Lord Podgark taking a bunch of damage going into uh, kind of mid armor pretty quickly, but it looks like he's pulling range and uh, managing to avoid some of the damage. Meanwhile, Space Chutney in the Vexor is dropping quite quickly as well. Yeah, both teams, very similar setups, but different decisions straight off the bat. The uh, Fain Disorder team going for the support of the enemy team, some of the stuff that might be easy to break, whereas Unthinkable is going straight for the juggler, straight for Recitano the Recitano in the Aneros for Fain Disorder dropping very quickly. We saw him uh, get webbed pretty early in the match, and uh, mm -hmm. that was an excellent choice because it meant that he couldn't get away, and he is down. That means the Unthinkables have a really, really big advantage already. Yeah, huge, huge advantage. Um, both teams losing one ship thus far, but it's Malediction versus Nero's. <laughs> yeah, what does that tell you? a very, very good trade if you're the Unthinkables. Having uh, the ability to knock out the Nero's that quickly means that these Vexor Navy issues and Vexors, which don't have a lot of hit points, the Fain Disorder team does way more damage than the Unthinkables, but it also doesn't have the EHP to eat through. You'll see on the defense bars uh, on your fancy UI there at the bottom of the screen, Unthinkables have a much larger defense bar. Another because Another Vexor of, going down for Fain Disorder looks like... DPS off Fain Disorder going on Aeris. There and Aeris goes down. Both and Aeris is down. So it's still very, very close. They've brought it back up by killing the other team's Logi. We've got the Vexor Space Chutney about to go down as well. But the Vexor Navy of Razor going down. This is now a DPS war. Who can live the longest? And I think in that fight, Fain definitely have the advantage. Uh, Unthinkables has the triple EOS, which is going to be very important as we go later into the match. But it's, yeah, trading these Vexors is what's important now. They need to trade them very quickly as we see two Vexors dying within seconds of each other. Yeah, I mean, in those worms, heavy drones aren't going to keep up with the worms. It's just not mm -hmm. going to happen, which is why I think we see the uh, uh, Unthinkables team getting rid of these worms next because they know that when they lose their support ships, they're just not going to be able to apply DPS to them. Yeah, the, uh, we are seeing Roigan going into armor now. Uh, that being said, he's not going down all that quickly, and we're seeing the uh, carries uh, of Podark going down even faster. Uh, this Vexor of uh, Exile is dropping quickly as well. Uh, knocking down these yeah. Vexors is really, really key at this point. Each time one team loses a ship, another <laughs> loses a ship right, right back next to it. It's great to see after such a uh, slow starting match last one Whoa. to see so many explosions right off the bat here. Yep, Fain Disorder now pulling ahead. They're ahead by two ships, but the still have a lot of work to do in those three mm. EOS still haven't taken any damage. Unthinkable is still notably entirely doable for is up by one point on points at the moment. Mm. It's 38 points versus 37 points and uh, yeah, if they can trade through this damage getting the, a worm down would be very valuable but the war killing worms is so hard they need to knock down the Vexor navies and the Vexors and that'll clear off so much of the damage off the field and keep their EOS alive. Altain in the Vexor navy now going down past half armor that's another big bit of DPS, but the, another Vexor for Unthinkables dropping. Their DPS now is just those three Eoses. That is heavy drones. They are slow. They're going to have a hard time keeping up, even with the faster cruisers. Having said that, the Vexor Navy go, does go down. I, I honestly don't know how the worms of Feign Disorder are going to die. Uh, I, I have a feeling that they probably won't, but what we are going to see here is both of these teams are trying to position themselves for go, 
the match going to time and winning on points. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping those worms and crew alive are going to be very important to the Fane Disorder team because that is actually quite a lot of points in those very fast ships because there's four of them. Um, but the EOS core of Unthinkable is going to be hard to eat through. Yeah, we've got six minutes for um, the uh, Fane Disorder team to start burning through these EOS. Hiras in the EOS for Fane Disorder is going, he's going down fast. He's in about half armor now, and it looks like he's definitely going to die before any of the EOSs for uh, Unthinkables does. Yeah. And that's going to be another big chunk of damage off the field. Now, it's, not, it's worth noting that EOS is unlike something like a um, Rattlesnake or a Gila, they do have bonuses to uh, light drones as well. So they do actually do some good damage with them. Uh, so they probably will have flights of warriors in reserve to hopefully allow them to take out the crews and worms later in the fight. Yeah, however, L'Assassin Noir, that EOS going down, down into structure, and the carries as well, taking a lot of damage. Doesn't look like much DPS is being applied to the Fane Disorder at this point. That EOS going down, and I think Fane Disorder may just take this. Well, Unthinkables is now up by four points. Uh, actually, that, with that uh, next kill there, uh, Fane Disorder has just put themselves up by two with the carry's destruction. So now we're at 66 points for Unthinkables versus 68 points for Fane Disorder with just Ooh. under five minutes left in the match. The Vexer of uh, Gotham is webbed, though. So if he can go down, and as he's going down into structure, there Ooh, he goes. There we go. That puts him that webbed, up that again by it. points. The uh, last, or the second to last Eos for Unthinkable is in about half armor. Now, these guys, obviously, they have a lot of EHP. There's not a ton of damage being applied to them, but they don't have any local tank at all. We're not seeing yeah. any armor repping on them. Any I'm wondering if having an uh, armor repper to handle this late fight once the Neurus is down would have been a smart move for them. Yeah, I mean, you don't know. I mean, like, the EOS can be a fantastic local tank solo boat if you've mm -hmm. got a bit of necessary. Oh, the crew are suddenly taking a lot of damage. Oh, yeah, hello, got crazy. The, the whole bunch of uh, Warrior 2s chasing him, and uh, it's only going to be a matter of time, I think, before they take him down. But as long as that EOS goes down, though, EOS that's going to be Fane Disorder with a very, very strong position. It's going to be one EOS versus a Vexor Navy, a Crewer, and still three whole yeah. worms to burn through. Worms yeah, have a huge amount of EHP. That basically, the fact that that EOS went down hands this battle to Fane Disorder. The fact that that EOS didn't have any local tank. Uh, we've seen it commonly used in previous tournaments in shield setups, where to have your shield command ships having a ASB for use after the uh, Vagi dies in the second stage of the fight um i think seeing like people throw on a single aar or something like that onto an eos is going to be smart for uh this exact situation if they Even had if your aneris is still alive it'll just supplement the rats it'll mean your aneris isn't using as much cap in case there are any newts on the field which is going to be very popular so many armageddons being chosen yes, as indeed. flagships i mean if it's got a local rep bonus just chuck one on there. It's just a safe choice. Yeah. We're also, none of these EOSs appear to have any smart bombs, which would have been very helpful, although it obviously is hard to eat through the HP on worm drones. Um, it still could have been helpful in the late fight. But that is, like, I mean, these EOSs are dropping quite quickly. It's now, we're not even going to go to time. The uh, last EOS for the Unthinkables of Michaela is dropping into structure now, and that's going to be a uh, very uh, exciting victory for Fane Disorder. They lost their uh, Neros first. I expected that to be something that to put them on the back foot, but instead they went right for the other Aneros and managed to get the advantage in that uh, war of ships trading back and forth. Great victory for Fane Disorder, you know, well fought, bloody on both sides, but I think, I mean, one of the upshots of this is a lot of teams, if they haven't been thinking about it already, they really need to think about, do I have a spare high for a smart bomb? Yes. There is so much damage based on light, medium, and heavy drones, so much off the sentry drones of the medium tournament. Smart bombs are going to be so, so effective here. I think they are indeed. And with that, we're going to send you back to the studio for a couple of ads, and then we'll be back very soon for um, our next match, which will be the last before the break, Solar, Solar Fleet, I didn't say feet there, versus the Devil's Warrior, Devil's Warrior Alliance.
Welcome back, everyone. This is our next match of the first day of the 12th Alliance Tournament. This is CCB Fozzy, joined once again by Apothe. Hello. And this is Solar Fleet versus the Devil's Warrior Alliance. We have some pretty cool setups coming up here, lots of healers, but also a pretty strong Mimitar sub-theme, something we haven't seen as much of earlier in the day. Uh, the Devil's Warriors have brought in double Claymore, triple Gila, Scimitar, triple Worm, double Merlin Stiletto. And why don't you tell us a little bit about this under-chipped Solar Fleet team? Well, the Solar Fleet team, they also have gone for the triple Gila. We've got two Vexo navies, we've got a Simi for some Logi, we've got a Slepnir potentially for some links with... Merlin, Kitsune, Argos as the smaller support. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, bringing 10 players is definitely a ballsy move. You know, you've got less guys to burn through the EHP of, but you do get to put more points into fewer ships. Yes, it's a ballsy move in the... Uh in that, like, a, a polite way of saying it's a terrible move in almost all situations. It's uh, I tried not... I to be it, nice. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> it's, uh, it's something that you generally don't want to do. There's a couple exceptions, but, uh, yeah, there's uh, a lot of drones moving across this field very quickly. Looks like the drones are going straight for the simi of Adrian, who is kiting off as best he can. Um, whoa, the Gila of Terex burning straight into the middle of the solo team. Whoa, what are you doing, buddy? Yeah, he is burning. They're burning right into each other there. It looks like they're going to be trying to get webs onto the opposing uh, simis. Uh, they've already got some newts yeah. onto the solar simi, but Adrian no webs yet. Dropping into low shield, dropping into armor already. The simi of Devil's team. It's going to be careful. It's going to armor. It's going to structure. It's going to there he goes he does down. go down. Wow, that is an early, good, strong kill by Solar Fleet. Uh, that giant swarm of augmented hammerheads, augmented uh, Valkyries is going to be able to shred these cruiser side ships. Yeah, whoa, well, and the Kitsune going down now for the solar team as well. Trading one ship for one ship, but a semi for a Kitsune, I'll type it anyway. We the worm now of Avery taking a lot of damage as well. The Vexor Navy of Mac on the side of Solar taking a lot of damage. Another Gila on the time of Devil's Warrior Rants. They're not focusing fire very much, but we are losing ships at a quick rate. It is madness. Ships flying everywhere, drones going from ship to ship to ship. Yeah, the uh, Terex in... Oh, wow, that heal had just disappeared from Terex. That is another big loss for the Devil's Warriors. They're, they've lost their Simi. They've already lost a big chunk of DPS. Meanwhile, only managed to kill a Kitsune. That's bad. And a Worm down, too. Uh, honestly, I... Uh, Wow, they are just dropping ships left, right. Vexor Navy now for Solar Fleet this time, uh, but Solar Fleet is, at this point, definitely in the stronger position. Yeah. Looks like the Gila's are newt fit, mm -hmm. um, doing terrible, terrible damage to the uh, opposing team that's going so well, but a Gila goes down. They're now even on numbers, with two players down to start with. Solar have evened up the match, though they are now about to lose one of their Merlins. Yeah, they're uh, they're in very uh, bad position with all of these uh, healers dropping so quickly. Uh, we've seen a lot of newts being applied to uh, Apples Appleton. Oh, awesome name, by the way. The scimitar for Solar Fleet. But no damage going on to him. They're not much damage. They really need to get him well, out of the they fight. They need to jack on the healer down, back to even numbers again. But then the Vexor Navy of Escha also dropping down. Yeah, the Estra is going to go down, I think. It's, he's in like, low structure. There he goes. Um, at this point, though, uh, Solar Fleet in a, such a dominant position on damage. Mm -hmm. There's only the Claymores and Worms left to do I much mean, damage from Devil's Warriors. Exactly. We've got, what, two Claymores, three Worms, and the Stilly versus a Slepnir. Simi Logi can never underestimate how good Logi is. Three whole Gila's that haven't been touched. And an Argos. It looks like the Devil's team is now trying to punish the Simi, but do they have enough DPS to break it? I'm not convinced a worm goes down that's even more dps off the field i think it's too little too late i mean the healers can do a lot of damage versus the simi as we saw from the Gila drones that shredded the simi for devil's warriors but the claymores are going to be using heavy assault missiles which don't have a great uh, damage application against small targets like a scimitar yeah, looks like the Simis holding reps absolutely fine. Devil's making a poor choice there. But I mean, really, what choice do you have at this stage? They've just lost their final uh, drone-based frigate. They've got the Stiletto and two Claymores. I mean, what, what, what can you do at this point? Oh, I definitely think that shooting the Scimitar is the correct choice. It's just that it was the correct choice also a couple of minutes ago and a yeah. couple of minutes before that. Um, it's one of those things that, at this point, their only hope is for that Scimitar to die very quickly, and then they can try to pick off some of these heals. Their heals obviously weren't very heavily tanked. They might have had uh, some Ewar in the mids, uh, might not have been using all of it for tank, but uh, though it went down incredibly quickly. I was very surprised at how fast those heals disappeared. 
Oh, right, that's only taking a lot of damage going to low shields, but we now have Mithendril taking down into half shield. Is he partially local tanks? Looks like he is. There's an ASB charge. He's going to hold on as best he can. Yeah. But three Gila's is a lot of DPS. He'll tank potentially until that ASB runs out. Uh, there's a very big local rep bonus on the uh, Claymores, but once the ASB charges run out, it's only a matter of time. He's being neutered. Uh, he's getting all the damage from the heal as applied to him. Uh, at this point, he's going to go down once he stops boosting. I, I can see the boosts have now stopped on him, uh, and that means that it's only going to be a few seconds longer before he goes down. Yep, I think, you know, Solo came in, we were a bit skeptical of their choice mm -hmm. to come with two less pilots, but, you know, it worked. Well done, Solo. Yes, great job to them. Uh, they're going to be moving on into the winner's bracket while Devers, Devil's Warriors is going to be facing elimination starting next weekend. Uh, yeah, and so honestly... I think I underestimated the power of the uh, Slepnir. It's been for a very long time my favorite tournament ship, and uh, I uh, saw the small number of pilots and uh, should have realized that even uh, that can be overcome by the wonder, the wonder of a Slepnir. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be Solar versus Fane in the winner's bracket and Devils versus the Unthinkables in the mm -hmm. loser's bracket. So one of these little cool tidbits that uh, it's easy to miss in a battle like this, you can see it on your screen now, the Slepnir for a Solar Fleet is cap transferring to his scimitar. Ooh, so nuts. that may have been what kept. So we saw Newt supplied to the Scimitar of Solar Fleet pretty early Ooh, the on. The Algos, Simis in armor. Are they yeah, going to get a Simi kill? Yeah, but it's too late. They very well may get the kill, but they're not going yeah. to win the fight at this it's, point. It's it's a nice yeah. morale build. <laughs> well, it doesn't even look like they're going to get that as the Claymore dropping uh, into low shields. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about these this Cap War. Um, that Algos was probably fit with um, a lot of uh, Newts in the highs, potentially all Newts. Um, it's a pretty effective uh, ship for that purpose, um, similar to the Newt Tristans you see on TQ. But uh, that is the kind of thing that would have worked great against a normal Simi, but against a Simi that has remote cap from a Slepnir, not so much. And that is the match, Solar Fleet, with a very convincing victory over the Devil's Warriors. And we are going to send you now back to some ads in GDCAM while we take a short break, get some food here at the studio, and then we'll be back in just a couple of minutes for the Rome versus dead terrorists which i think is another one of those really anticipated and matches that's today. me done for the weekend i'll see you guys next weekend great matches so he's gonna live to fly another day or because of winning with broadswords and then winning with dominic says this was a very interesting match i'm gonna come back and look at this later oh no he's so cool but not very good